But let's take a closer look at all the details of how the genius here is constructed and all the pieces to it. All right, so we're gonna start up here on the top and here we have the spool holder and then we have the filament detector. So your spool will sit on here on the top and then your filament will go through that little hole there and then out and down to the hot end right here where it will be pushed through by the direct drive extruder. So this brace here on the top is completely plastic but it's you know quite a thick plastic. It's not like you know a flimsy thing, so it's quite durable. And we have this huge logo on the top. So if we go to the back, we can see that there is a belt here that runs in between of the two Z-axis leads. And what that does is it synchronizes the whole system together. You know that way one motor or one side or the other can't be thrown off because they're coupled together between each other through this belt here on the top. So I think that's a great design and definitely gives it a peace of mind that you know there's not going to be any kind of fluctuations in the up and down motion. So the spool holder adjusts here with this little knob. So if you loosen it, you can spread it either wider or narrower according to your spool. And that's the slot there that the adjustability has and this one is just stationary and doesn't move so once you get that right you just tighten this little knob here and you know it stays in that position so very nice spool holder and you know these bearings obviously are a huge plus for the spool to run really smooth all right so as we go down we can see the x-axis channel here is huge but in any case it's a very large channel and that really makes it very stable the way this whole printer is designed is extremely stable so there are caps here the brackets so we can't loosen or tighten the wheels which is okay as long as they're done right from the factory and this also houses our brass bushings here for the leads to run on and they did leave a little play here on purpose so if there are any kind of fluctuations you can flex in that play a bit and so as we move down we can see our two z-axis motors on each side with flexible couplers here and so if I spin one, obviously the other one will spin because the whole system spins together, as you can see here. So all the end stop switches are like these sensing optical kind or however that works. And so here's our Y, our Z is over here on this side, and then our X is right over here. So definitely a more modern way to do end stop switches compared to the traditional clicky kind. So theoretically, you know, these switching should last much, much longer. So here we can see the back of the printer and the cabling that comes out of it. Very nicely organized. We got the bed wiring here and a nice cable shroud here. And looks like it's integrated into the silicone pad under there. So everything is quite flexible and there's no strain that needs to be relieved. So very well designed there. So here we have our power button, fused outlet with the power cord. And this is some more information about the printer. So the build size is 220 by 220 by 250. Very competitive size there with a lot of other printers. And it looks like the filament is PLA and TPU, which is really cool to have a printer that, you know, specializes in TPU. And the reason it does is because of its direct drive. And let's take a closer look at the hot end. And so this is our hot end assembly. It's all together with the direct drive. I have to say this is, you know, a better overall package compared to having a Bowden tube. So we do have this nice blue cover here and that's actually molded also. It's not 3D printed. We have a cable here that plugs then runs along the channel here into probably a junction box in here and that's when it comes back out and goes back down into the base here and this is where we plugged our plug which by the way is 3d printed is the only piece here so back to the hot end here we have the direct extruder and it looks like the geared kind which is i think called titan and so we do have a little nub here that we can push to relieve the tension on the pusher right here which is metal but the gears are plastic though but in any case, below this extruder assembly here, we have the hot end assembly, which is comprised of heat block cooling and then the parts cooler fan here. On the heat block, you can see that there is a metal heat sink right there behind it. And if we go underneath, we can kind of see a little better. So this was the heat sink right here. And then the heat sink is connected to another piece behind it. That's where the filament goes through. And then as it goes down, it goes to a heating block right here, which by the way is insulated with this silicone sock. And then we have a little nozzle here at the end. So everything is really nicely tucked away and beautifully assembled here. And we can see our parts cooling fan is quite large there and has a pretty big opening for cooling. And it's not 3D printed as most are. So on the other side of that heat block, we can see we have a little LED module and this is where we have a light. And so the light does shine down on the bed so you can see better of what you're printing. All right, and so if we go down, we can see our bed here. It is a glass bed with this perforated little 
dots on it. So hopefully you can see the little dots there. And so what happens is when it heats up, it expands and holds the model to it very well. And then as it cools, it releases the model. And that's what makes this thing really unique and makes printing very easy because you don't really have to think about, you know, glue and this and that. It just, it holds the model and then releases when it cools. So, and very friendly overall, except for, you know, maybe a few situations where you had power loss and your bed would cool, but you're not finished printing, you know, that could be a problem because then your model just pops off on its own. But because that normally never happens, overall this ultra base bed here is a great, great option and I'm glad they have it on this printer. So if we go below the glass bed, we can see there is a silicone mat here and that is the heating element that heats up the bed and that does work off AC. So you're actually sending household power straight to this element here and it is controlled, you know, on and off with a controller and below that we have insulation. So not only do we have a great heating element, we have insulation. So this bed should literally heat up faster than the nozzle. And so below that, we can see we have a frame with four large knobs to adjust the bed. So on the front of the printer, we have a big logo here that says artillery. On the right side of it, we have some venting holes and a USB connection to the computer. On the left side of the printer, we can see we have a pretty good size touchscreen with a little reset button is what that looks like. And if we go to the top here, we can see we have a USB plug and that's to plug in the provided thumb drive here. And then we also have a micro SD card slot if you wanna use that route. And on the left side here, it's pretty clean with some venting holes. All right, and so that is the printer. So let's go ahead and power it on, level the bed, check out the UI, and then start our first print. All right, so I got the printer plugged in the wall. Let's go ahead and hit the power button. All right, so we got an artillery logo and a really nice looking UI. I definitely love how they decided to go with the black background. It looks very nice. So with the printer just running idle, it's quite quiet. I can just hear a little bit of fans and it's mostly that big fan on the bottom. So here it looks like we got the hot end temperature, the bed temperature, and the fan speed. Then we have three hot buttons, tools, set, and print. So let's go ahead and check out tools. So if we click on that, we can see we can preheat, extrude, move home, level, change filament, and more. Let's see what's more. Okay, and then we can turn on and off our light. Okay, so if I click white, our light turns on. Let's try red, and then green, and then blue and that is white so yeah there's not a huge difference between white and blue to be honest and then our black bulb here turns it off so first things first before i do anything i like to make sure that all our z axis end stop switches work so let's go ahead and click on move well they don't have a home button here oh here we go there's a dedicated home button so let's click on home and see what happens it's a moment of truth that looks like we gotta click home again all right so there it goes Okay, so it looks like the X and the Y is fine. Now we're gonna see the Z. And it does move quite quick, by the way. All right, looks like it stopped perfect. And we can see there's a little light there indicating that it's activated. And according to our nozzle, it looks like we're just about right where we need to be. Yeah, it looks like this printer was adjusted from the factory quite well before it was shipped out. All right, so that's great. Let's go back. So the next thing I like to do is I like to preheat everything to make sure our bed works and then our nozzle also preheats. So let's go to heat. And then here we have some options. We can choose between the, the hot end and the bed. So if we click on a hot end, let's click add. Okay, so I guess it makes you do it manually. Interesting. All right, so let's go to 220 and then on the bed, let's go to 60. And uh, we'll see how quick that warms up. So if we go back to the home, we can see our hot end and our bed is heating up. And you guys can see how fast the bed is heating up. It's already at 50 almost. So yeah, it looks like they'll get to the preheat. Well, yeah, the bed actually beat the uh, hot end. And that was actually my thought from the beginning. So yeah, that's a great, great design on the bed here. I love how quick it heats up. 